Mm. And of course, you talked about Aaron Quadri. That's right. The rankings are out. Commonwealth wow. is number one. Wow. Good for us. Wow. And that's a good way to send a stroke to Inguchi Wachiku, our news editor, Sporting Live. Oh, good to have you on the program. My pleasure, Austin. Mm. And I see you, 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 you've been following Aaron Quadri. Good one for us. Um, best in Africa, now best um, at the Commonwealth. This just says one thing, we should do more to develop the sport in this Quite country. Quite hard one in Austin. I mean, for nine months, since mm. August 2016, Harold Kwadri has been the number one tennis player in, in the Commonwealth uh, Nations. I mean, he, he overtook, you remember, he overtook uh, Singapore's Yao Ning as the best player in the Commonwealth Nations. And um, to realize uh, number 12th among the Commonwealth Nations, I mean, mm. in, in the top 20. So we have two players in the top 20. And going into the ITTF um, you know, World Championship in Dusseldorf, right. uh, Harno Kordi is also ranked at the first. So it means, I mean, he's going there as a top-ranked player. Mm -hmm. um, he is going to you know, be waved aside for a certain level. And, I, I mean, he's such an inspiration for this country. Hmm. I mean, how, how, could you, how could you explain that a player has maintained the number one position for nine months consecutively? Not um, after two months, you come back three months, but nine months. It shows consistency. It shows that he has been playing top quality, you know, table tennis. And mm. tomorrow he's 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 he's, he's, he's going to take to the uh, table, uh, play for his club in in, in the French League. So uh, I mean, this, um, this, this for me, we, we have to look at ways of using Aaron Quadri as an inspiration right. for That's other right. players. That's right. We have to make sure that um, other table tennis players get to that level by playing, you know, playing championship, you know, getting uh, better um, and training. And also exposing them, mm. you know, to be to play amongst the best on the continent and even outside the continent. And then the mm. ultimate gain, rubbing off on your ranking. Yeah. Very good. Uh, for uh, and Kourley. you know, just to talk about Arnold Kourley a little bit more. Um, over two years ago, this guy was close to number 300 in the world. Um, and in, and mm. within one year, he moved from about 270 to something 30. to the top 30 in the world. It was a mm. big leap. And, and we said sometimes. That when you make a leap that way, um, we want to see how consistent it will be. That's right. And for the past two years, mm. that he's moved up into the top 30, he stayed there amongst right. the best in the world. So right. it's, it's very encouraging. It says mm. a lot about the professional ethics of Arnold Quadri. It says a lot about the amount of hard work he has put into his game, game and how his, his stock has risen, his mm. profile has risen on, in the game. And I remember the, the, there was a time I spoke to him and he told me that what he needs to do now is to not just stay consistent there, that he wants to stay push up a little bit. Yeah, uh, that's and that's going to take a lot of hard work. So yeah. we'll wait to see mm. how Arnold Kodri continues to mm. make progress, um, probably move into the top 20, and then see how far it will go. But this is really encouraging. And yep. as you said, an opportunity for us to use Arnold Kodri mm -hmm. to turn around the fortunes of table tennis in yeah, this country agree. and get corporate bodies, private sector, to come in and help us to really propagate the game. No more, no more Kavi said. That just got in. Arnold Quadri being number one uh, in the latest Commonwealth rankings and we needed to talk about it. Table tennis just uh, got by right here on the program. Let's talk about season nine of the Channel's National Kids Cup. That's what we do with so much joy. Do you know, tell somebody that we have our representatives from Lagos State, Explanter Primary School from Ikorodu and Community Primary School from Abule Egba. They will represent Lagos at this year's Channels National Kids Cup. So in, we've seen talent, we've seen passion, we've seen goals. We are developing football. I mean, that's the tradition. Um, we're used to seeing this now um, every year when uh, Channels um, uh, put this together. Mm. Um, and I'm happy that this is catching very fast um, everywhere in the world, uh, everywhere in Nigeria, I beg your pardon. Um, we've seen the impact that this is already having on Nigerian football. Um, with uh, most of the players from the MPFL mm -hmm. under 15 promises mm -hmm. having uh, passed through um, the channels uh, uh, National Kids Cup. So we can see that channels is making the right kind of impact. Um, so it, I'm, I'm happy the two teams from Lagos um, are out. Uh, I'm, I'm also happy that other states are beginning to organize That's right. uh, competitions to pick out their representatives. So mm. uh, those who are coming here are more of the best of the best. Yep. So it's, 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 it's good. And um, I, I've said this so many times, mm. that when you, when you go to watch these kids play, you have to be very strong emotionally so that you don't start to cry <laughs> when know. they start to cry uh, and then get carried away as mm. well because mm. it's really, really impactful. Yep. You really feel it. Mm. Uh, and um, when, when kids at this level, yeah. at under 13, mm. are beginning to get this kind of projection, this mm. kind of platform that Chinese is giving, 
to show what skills, what qualities they have, yeah. then you know the Nigerian football is on the right path. I agree, qualities. I know only you have something to talk about, but let's come back. Let's tell you a story about Sharif um, Sadiq from Lincrest Primary School. Um, we'll let you see this video, and hopefully only will be able to say one or two things about it, because we have seen all sorts of things at the China's National Kids Cup, just Lagos preliminaries. Uh, at the end of four day action, four days, just four days of football, 100 goals scored, uh, seven penalty. Uh, we had to get winners through seven penalty kicks. Now let's go back, let you watch this video. When you're done watching it, you'll be speechless. Don't go anywhere, stay. What can happen if uh, you are standing there and your boys are not playing to your instructions, you are dishing out to them? Still on play. Oh, he's still standing. Unlike other link rest player who go to ground easily. This young man is still on the ball. He's still on the ball. Oh, my goodness. He's still on the ball. He's going. He dribbles his man again. He's still going. He's still going. He's still going. Why can't he make it? He strikes it. And he scores! Beautiful goal from Sharif Sadiq. A beautiful, beautiful goal. And it's a beautiful goal. One of the goals of the tournament. Lindcrest, beautiful goal for Sadiq. And the crowd goes into ruptures. A beautiful finish from a mesmerizing run. Beautiful, beautiful goal. Exquisite finish. They had no chance. They didn't see it coming. And there was nothing they could do about it. Oh my goodness. Sheru Salik has scored what we may call the goal of the season here at the Unico Stadium at the Bologna House of the Channel. Ooh. I, I, I watched that goal over and over again. I tried to look for the word. Oh yeah, I'm sorry I'm doing this to you. But after seeing that guy and that amazing run, by the way, he's just 10 years old. His school didn't make it to the national finals, but he has given us a moment that we, we will not forget forever and ever. Uh, absolutely breathtaking. You know, I had good goosebumps watching the, his movements on and off the ball. You know, look at how he took the ball, um, meandered his way, you know, very good footwork. And the way he, he, he wow. scored that goal. You know, it, it, it belittles the, his, his ability. I mean, these these are the kind of players that um, uh, every coach will be proud of. Mm. And when you see them on the streets, you you you, you just pray that there is a platform like this to discover mm. them. And mm. that's what Channels uh, Kids Cup is doing. I mean, Channels is synonymous with um, you know excellence, professionalism, and the way they have you know, organized this tournament. Mm. I mean, watching this is is, is, is is a testimony. I mean, I it's, it's it's an indication that. You know the the, the company, the, the TV station is doing so well. Mm. I, I, we just pray that this lad, this young boy, ten year old, yeah. you know, should go as far as possible. I mean, do this nation proud with all these skills. Mm. I mean, it can't be wasted. It can't be wasted. So, so you were you, when he was making that round, watching you. You're like, is he going to shoot now? Where will he shoot? Look mm. at where he got the ball from. From the center circle. And start counting. Mm. Start counting this amazing run. Eyes on the prize. His team was losing at this point four zero. They lost the game 6-1, but this is the goal mm. that mm. everyone is talking uh, about. You know, that, that, that was something I said a few weeks ago. I said there are some goals that should be counting double. Um, <laughs> if we have, if we have three-pointers in basketball, we should, be, we, should, we should start to think about some goals counting uh, for double wow. or for even uh, triple. Uh, they surely will make uh, a Lionel Messi or a Diego Maradona, goal, make them green with envy. At 10, you're taking out the entire field to score a goal for your team. Uh, yes, they lost the game. Uh, but then this goal really is what um, all the effort, what all the accolades that it gets. And uh, I mean, these kids never know what has been done to them mm. until a few years down the line wow. when you are able to reproduce this for them to see uh, and then appreciate. But this is really amazing. And what a way to finish it. The composure yeah. Yeah. just beats it's, me. It's, like, this yeah. guy has done everything. At this point, there's a rush of blood to the brain. You yeah. wonder, what should I do? And mm. he's just come. He's like, I can't cool. make this run. And, and it can't be yeah. cool. I mean, if I was a goalkeeper, there are some moves <laughs> that uh, when you make them, I just, have, I just have to allow you to score your goal. Yeah. Yeah. Surrender yourself. Surrender yourself. I mean, <laughs> but that, that, that's a very good one. So, uh, oh my goodness. So we have shown you Sheriff Sadiq. Write down that name. He's from Lincrest Primary School. He could do. They made it to the national finals last year, but this year they didn't qualify. Let me tell you a story of another 10-year-old guy. His name is Oguyo Mirazak. His team made it to the finals. And what a story. Razak is just 10 years old, don't he? And then this game got into penalties. Game over, end of regulation time. No one wants to give referee ball. He steps up to it.
Look at how he gave the referee the ball with style. Said, take the ball. Wow. Let's go and play penalties. See his face, <laughs> his display of passion. Wow. Look at his display of passion. Prays with his team, walks up to referee and says, I need to play in the penalty. You need to pick me for penalties. But him, at this age, this guy already understands passion. Oh, yeah, he already knows what. No, 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 no. Because they equalized two minutes to the end of the game. They were losing 1 0. And then they, so he went to his coach and said, Me, penalties. I said, Okay, no, you can't play, but it's okay. He sits down there. And then Oye, when he gets into penalty, you need to see that even at this young age, they understand teamwork. We'll go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue with Oguyo Mirazak and the Channel's National Kids Cup. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. <laughs> 